Hey guys, Brad here, and today we're going to be taking a look at the Bosch Colt router. So why don't you come on in and we'll take a look. I keep mine in a T-Stack, and I'm ashamed to say I do not have a foamy in here. So sorry guys, it's a bit of a mess, but uh, this is my setup. This thing is super handy. It's nice and small. It only measures right now. I've got it up at about nine and a half inches high where the motor itself is about three inches in diameter. The base plates three and a half by yeah, three and a half. So very handy. It is the corded model. It's variable speed one through six and that's just right on the top and this has micro adjustment here it's accurate within 1 64th so if you want to adjust your bit inside and out the way to do it is you would release this lever you want to make sure it's the base plate is twisted to my left okay and then you can adjust here and that will move your your base plate in and out and i'll show you basically what's happening i can get this apart all right basically what's happening is it's running up and down in this machined area here that's where the threaded rod runs up and down and inside that's that's your threaded rod so that's what you're using to adjust to micro adjust this and it does work quite well and then when you're putting it all back together there are double arrows on the side and you just match them up to the double arrows right here and everything lines up to where it needs to be and locks in place you can slide it up and down give it a twist now it won't move as easily. It's got a little bit of movement, but not much. And then once you get it dialed into where you want to be, then you lock it. Okay. Now to change your bit, very easy. This red button here holds this in place, so it locks it. And then they give you a wrench and away you go. And I'll just do that this unlocks and I can take your bit out this is a uh, 1 8 round over if you're wondering and you can slide it in now you don't have to use this you could slip a smaller wrench in here but I don't see the point in doing that when you've got a lock just get that down a bit more make sure you hold the red button down and just tighten her up and that's it that's how you put a router bit in. So then, double arrows line back up, slide it on, give it a twist. And I always just kind of eyeball my plate to where I want to be. And I lock it in, and then I micro adjust to, to where we need to be. So it doesn't really matter for this, but the demonstration, I'll just lock it in there. Your on off is just on the front here. So pretty easy. And the variable speed is on the top, which I already mentioned. I really like the grip on this. It's quite nice. The uh, base plate, this router, I love these routers because they're small, they're inexpensive. You could have a whole bunch of them in your shop with different router bits on them, different base plates. You could drop this in a table if you wanted. If if you're just doing, you know, small one eighth roundovers, just small stuff, you could totally put this in a table and use it that way. I've done that before. Um, just when I'm doing lots of little work, I'll make a quick table and I'll drop it in. And I got a different plate. I'll drop it in and then I can just router away. So. Uh, there's lots of options that you can kind of do with these these routers to sort of speed up your production. Um, I know, like I have two of these, and mainly it's because you know I can have a 
I can keep my one eighth in here. I can keep it set. I never have to think about it. I never have to adjust it. I'm just good to go. And then the other one I could keep, uh, I don't know, an, an OG or a 16th or a chamfer in there. And just depending on the job, right? Whatever you need. So that's why I love these because they're just inexpensive. They're really, really good routers. They don't fail. And um, yeah, I, I don't know what else I could say about them. So let's do some uh, routering here. We'll just do a quick pass on this MDF and uh, take a look at it. I'll leave a link down below for Amazon if you guys are curious. Um, there's a couple different kits out there, I believe. I'll take a look. But uh, yeah, um, you know, there's other dust collection and stuff. I'm not sure. I'll have to check it if there's a uh, an ability to have a dust collector on this particular model. I'll have to look. If there is, I'll I'll leave a link down below. So I'm just going to turn this on. I'll put my glasses on just because I'm routering, and you never know, right? Router bits, you know, knock on wood, but they could flick out. This is this is spinning at a crazy amount of speed. And saying that, how, how fast does this go? Um, 16,000 to 35,000 uh, RPM, all right? So that's crazy fast. You do not want to see one of these flying across a shop. I have, working in a wood shop. Um, it's, it's not cool seeing one of these whip across the room. So I'll turn this on and away we go. So that's on level one for variable speed. I never really route at that level. That's six, okay. I keep it at about four and a half. So as you can see, really easy to, to maneuver. You just come in. And there we have just a nice 1 8 round over ready for sanding. So for me, I love this router also because of the grip. I find it's really, really nice. It's small. I've got fairly big hands, but I'm, I'm not a monster or anything. You know, it's just it fits really, really nicely. Um, I, my opinion with the cordless models, I love them because I hate cords. However, I find they're a little bit wider and they're not as comfortable in your hands. So if you're doing a ton of routering, you might want to consider having something that's a little bit more comfortable as opposed to being cordless. It, it really depends on what you're doing and, and your comfort level and, and really your budget. So you cannot go wrong with these Bosch Colt routers. I've had them for years and they're just, they're the best, they just are truly awesome routers um, there's also items like this if you want to it won't ah, sorry if uh, you're using a different style of bit I'm just gonna unplug this first before I start screwing around always remember to unplug your tools when you're messing around the bits so they have this little plastic knob on the back I missed I missed that this unscrews and then this guide slips in the back like that, okay? You can tighten it down. Oops, I think I'm doing it wrong, guys, sorry. <laughs> yeah, I'm a little rusty. This slips on the back like that, okay? That would have been funny, didn't look right. And this is basically, let's say you're doing a, uh, a flute or a dado. Um, this will work in, in that application. So this rides along your outside edge of your work. And just move it over here like this. Okay. Now I'm a little low, so I'm just going to quickly adjust this up. 
All right. So now this part here rides along the outside of this MDF, and then I can router along just like this. All right. So there's no need for me to set up a, a jig or a straight edge. I've just got it right here. And then you can adjust this in and out. So that's the furthest it goes. But if, if you notice, I'm not square anymore. So if you, you kind of want to stay in the parameters of this channel to kind of keep you square. And now we can route our way like that. Now the distance, if you're curious, because I'm sure someone will ask me, that is four and three quarters. But if I want to risk being out of square, I could max it. And now I'm five and a half. That's max. All right. Five and a half inches to center of bearing. So this is a cool item to have in your kit. Um, I have used this plenty of times in the past. Nothing recently, but um, very, very handy to have. And yeah, this goes in my messy box. I should do a T-Stack foamy organization video on uh, how to put all this in here nicely so that I look more of like a pro, not a not an amateur, right? I don't know. Something like maybe like that. No, don't like that. Maybe in the middle. The middle's cool. But yeah, we'll think of something. We'll make a video on that, getting this organized, because bouncing around in your in your truck or trailer, it's not cool. It'll get damaged. And uh, I've got bits and pieces in your screws and all kinds of things that I thought I lost that I'm actually finding. There was a video we shot a while ago, actually, on the uh, Bosch router table. And I was looking for my Allen key that adjusts the router up and down. And this is it. <laughs> I just found it. This was what I was looking for. Uh, so yeah, if you want to check that video out, that's on the Bosch router table. And it takes the two and a quarter horsepower router. So found it. I'll put it back in the box. At least I know where it is now. Now the router kit that I bought a long time ago um, was the Colt, the one horsepower Colt. And it came with, this is like a laminate trimmer uh, kit. And it comes with a bunch of different bases. So they give you three different bases with this kit. And I can honestly say I've never used either of them. <laughs> but that is mostly because I don't do laminate. 99% um, of my jobs are stone surfaces. So I'm never really doing a laminate. And I just have not needed to use them. I think I tried using this once. But uh, yeah, I, I just honestly can say I haven't used them. So if you are into laminate, though, this is the router to get. Uh, it is such a, a sweet router and these bases, this one basically allows you to go at an angle and you can adjust it down here. And so you can move it back to 90 and you can go down to 45 and it's got some positive stops. And on the side, it has some degrees there. So you can just click up to where you need to be. And then it also has a micro adjustment here on the front. So you can move your router in and out. So a very cool base to have. Okay. The next one, this is more designed for your laminate when you're trying to get in close to a corner. So it's an offset. So inside, if you want to take a look inside there, the router sits in here and this screws on to your collar and connects to this belt in there. And then when this turns, when this part here rotates, it'll rotate this belt, which will then in turn, I'll flip it over, turn your router bit right here. Okay. So, 
your router bit would be here like this and I don't know if I can turn the belt from inside but that's me turning the belt okay so that gets you a lot closer that distance um, with this particular bit is half an inch roughly okay so you can get a lot closer to a wall or a corner or whatever you need to get close to and then finish it off with your file so very very handy to have um, like I said I haven't used this I think maybe actually did use this once but not enough that it stuck with me <laughs> so yeah very cool to have if you're into laminate highly recommend this, this uh, particular kit um, and uh, yeah if you have any comments please leave them down below I'll try and answer them as best as I can about the different parts in here but they give you a lot of little bits and pieces to to uh, make your routering life a little easier but uh, yeah guys leave me some comments down below I'd love to know what you think about these are they worth it to you or are you totally invested in cordless as you know I have the DeWalt cordless uh, router and that thing I love but the only reason I love it is because it's cordless um, and it's just a game changer for me being cordless so yeah comments love to hear from you subscribe hit that notify bell give me a thumbs up if you'd like and uh, yeah keep on crushing it and we'll catch you later